Hello everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we're talking about the 16 personalities when gifted. Hey ISFJ, uh, did you finish that list I asked you to yesterday? Yeah, actually I finished it for the entire week. And after what I was done with that, I organized it all in a file. And after that, I color coded it. And after that, I shared it with the entire team. And now everyone is super effective and her performance in the group has increased by 25%. As an ISFJ, you might be gifted if you show a higher attention to detail than average for other ISFJs. Perhaps you find yourself more attentive to nuance, more able to spot nuances in music and in songs and emotions in other people. Perhaps you're better able to convey through words what it is that you feel and what it is that you mean in a way that will make other people understand what you say. Perhaps you'll notice that you show an ability, an unusually high ability to navigate or organize your environment and the sensory that's happening around you. As an ENTP, you might show a higher than average ability as an ENTP to learn new languages compared to other ENTPs. You might, for example, be better at negotiating with other people. You might spot pros and cons more easily, helping you make decisions more efficiently. And you might see more nuances in decisions and in logical expressions, and you might make more accurate decisions and actions, right? Besides that, you might see that uh, you show higher than average creativity for an ENTP and a higher ability not just to have and think of options, but also a higher ability to act on options and spot nearby possible and likely scenarios, right? Now, as an ESFP, you might see that you are and show a higher awareness to your environment than what is average. You notice and spot things around you that other people miss. You seem to have eyes in the back of your head. You seem to hear and notice sounds around you before anyone else spots them. And you, beyond that, show a higher capacity to act on instinct in the moment to respond to that situation. You're faster, your instincts are faster, and you're more attuned to your body. You know what different signals in your body mean, and you show a higher than average motor coordination, allowing you to learn athletic tasks more quickly and learning to, you know, and beyond just your body, you might feel and notice aspects and nuances in your feelings and what it is that you want and what it is that you feel. And you might know exactly what color or exactly what thing you want to wear tomorrow and exactly how you want something to look and exactly how to express nuances of how you feel in the moment and to manage your own emotions more effectively. Now, as an INTJ, something you might notice when you're gifted is Compared to other INTJs, you show higher time frames of thinking. You think further into the future and you consider more scenarios. You show a higher strategic capability than average for an INTJ. An ability to not just come up with plans, but also to come up with realistic and likely plans and plans that have a higher frequency of success, right? And beyond that, as an ISTJ, or sorry, an INTJ, and beyond that, as an INTJ, you might show a higher capacity to philosophize and to come up with theories about what's happening around you. You show a stronger theory of mind, in a sense that you show a higher capacity to understand and explain things that are happening around you, right? Now imagine that you're an INFP. As an INFP who is gifted, you might notice that you can more accurately explain what it is that you are feeling and what words or what language or what phrases or what <laughs> things or symbols or images best correspond to those emotions. And you might better know what to do with your emotions and how to act on them and how to express them to the outer world. And beyond that, you might show a higher capacity than is usual for INFPs to not just come up with options, but to come up with likely options, you know, things that could actually happen. And to be able to sift through and know when it is that something might happen or when it's an unlikely or impossible scenario, right? And on top of that, as an INFP is gifted, you might show a higher theoretical inclination. You might be and show more academic interest. You might show an interest in deeper studies and more nuanced and complex topics. Where you are a gifted INFP, you show a higher capacity to study for a longer period of time and a higher amount of focus in that activity, right? And say you're an ESTJ. When you're an ESTJ is gifted, you're gonna not just be more productive than other ESTJs, 
you know as an ESTJ how to produce things that actually give results, things that actually help you develop and improve the quality of your life. And beyond that, as an ESTJ who's gifted, you show a stronger logistical awareness. You know how to navigate different situations. You know how to make backup plans. You know how to prepare ahead of an activity. You know what you need to do depending on what the other person does. And you know, on top of that, what is happening at your workplace or in your environment or who's in there, what their names are, what they do, and how you can navigate and work with them as a team player. And now as an ENFP, you might show a more exceptional range of creativity. You might have more unusual ideas than what is normal for an ENFP. And you show a higher capacity to not just have ideas, but to act on them. And beyond that, as an ENFP who's gifted, you tend to show an exceptional capacity and interest for language, right? Which means that you not only enjoy hearing and learning about new languages, but you learn languages faster than what's normal for an ENFP. And you find it easier to learn new subjects at all. Your capacity for learning in school and in different subjects is above average for an ENFP. And beyond that, your capacity for retaining the things that you learn is really high too. And beyond that, as an ENFP, you're better with people than what is normal for other ENFPs. You know how to talk and have fun conversations with other people. Hi. <laughs> and now imagine that you're an ISTJ, right? If you're an ISTJ who's gifted, what you're going to find is you can not just uh, spend an amazing amount of focus and concentration on a task, but you can do it amazingly well, right? So the quality of the things that you do and how you do it is exceptionally well thought out. So imagine you're given a task. As an ISTJ who's gifted, you're better at not just coming up with how to do that task, but also what you're going to need to complete that task in terms of resources and how much time it's going to take to do and how to make sure that you do that task as effectively as possible, avoiding to waste your time and avoiding to do things that won't work and focusing on tried and true strategies. And so beyond that as an ISTJ, you're going to have more tried and true strategies than what is normal for an ISTJ. And as an ESTP, something you're going to notice as an ESTP is, on average, as an ESTP, you show a higher capacity to improvise and adapt and overcome challenges around you. So if there's problems, you don't see problems. You see options and solutions to fix them, right? So you're a problem solver and you're a person that can solve problems faster than most people. And when most people freak out and think, oh my God, how are we gonna solve that? You know how to jump straight into action and how to get it done. Compared to other ESTPs, you're faster, you adapt quicker, and you think of solutions faster than what's normal for ESTPs, right? And so imagine you're an ISFP. When you're an ISFP, what you're gonna find is, as an ISFP, you show not just a nuanced way of expressing yourself, you show an exceptional ability to express your feelings and your inner world in the outer world, which means you can manifest and you can use things that you experience inside and you can find how to act and what to do in order to manage those emotions. And so as an ISFP, you might be better at finding concrete ways of manifesting ideas or thoughts that you have for the outer world to see and like, and in a way that other people might like and connect with you, right? And so you might become like a light post. You might show an unusually high level of individualism. You might show an unusually high amount of energy in the things that you do. And you might show an unusually high level of focus and attention when you are engaged with a task. So the things that you create, the things that you draw, the things that you write, the things that you make are in general more beautiful than what's normal for an ISFP. And how you make them and how you put yourself into things is more nuanced, has higher levels of quality, and shows your feelings and your individuality more than what is normal. And so imagine you're an ENTJ, right? As an ENTJ, what you're gonna see is a higher than average capacity to come up with smart and innovative plans and ideas. So if you have a crazy business idea, most of all, you're gonna have more crazy business ideas than what's normal for an ENTJ. But you're gonna also spot and come up with better strategies to realize those business ideas, which means you're gonna 
not just enjoy coming up with plans and strategies, but you're going to come up with effective plans and strategies. And so you're going to have a higher track record of success, but also you're going to go further with things than most people would be able to do, right? And here it comes with knowing how to think into the future, knowing how to account for and plan for and make multiple strategies, and knowing how to knowing how to communicate your ideas in a way that can get other people's approval and support, right? Because if you can express your ideas and can come up with a unique way to build a business out of something, you're going to rally other people to you and you're going to make other people more interested in what you do. And so imagine that you're an ISTP, right? If you're an ISTP, something you're going to notice is, on average, you show a higher ability to analyze and diagnosticize problems, which means that you know if something is not working and why it's not working and what can be done to fix it. You know how things should work and how things might look. You can see how and what parts constitute a whole and how each of those parts work together in a synchronized way, right? And on top of that, as an ISTP is gifted, compared to other ISTPs, what you're gonna see is when you engage with new tasks and when you're learning something new, you're gonna learn it faster. It's gonna be easier for you to crack the code and to understand how the system works and how you can navigate that system effectively to get things to work the way you want. And that also makes you a more gifted problem solver. And so imagine you're an ESFJ. And if you're an ESFJ, something you're gonna notice is you're better with people. You're a more natural speaker, you're more charismatic, you're better at getting out people on your side and you're better at managing the emotions around you. So if somebody is upset, you know what to say. And compared to other ESFJs, you know how to manage those emotions more effectively. While an ESFJ who's not gifted might not know exactly what to say or how to do things or might say something but not the right thing, you as an ESFJ who's gifted, you know people more and you have a higher understanding of interpersonal relationships and what each person wants and what they need in order to feel better. And similarly, beyond that, as an ESFJ, you know how to understand and navigate the people around you. You know their names, you know what they look like, you know how they like to talk, and you could imitate their expressions more easily, making you a more talented actor and a person that's better at adapting to what's happening in your environment. It goes for knowing how to organize your environment effectively, knowing where things should be in a room, knowing how to organize your documents and office, knowing how to organize your files on a computer. Like these skills are gonna be higher than average for an ESFJ. And finally, if you're an INFJ who's more gifted than average, compared to other INFJs, what you're gonna see is you go deeper in the theories that you formulate. You go and you study harder and you put more focus into these theories. You spend longer times on them and you show a higher amount of intensity when working on these theories and ideas. And beyond that, you know what's a likely scenario for the future, and you know what's unrealistic. When you speculate and predict on future events, you're right more often compared to other INFJs. And beyond that, what you show is a higher understanding of yourself than what's normal for an INFJ. And beyond that, a higher understanding of what other people are feeling, right? When you have bad emotions and experiences, it's easier for you to bounce back and to know how to talk to yourself. You know how to speak to yourself to make yourself feel better. You know how to suit yourself. You know how to manage your own sensitivities and how to navigate around your own emotions. And you know why you feel a certain way and also how you can feel better in the future and what course of action might get you further ahead. And similarly, if you're an INTP, just like the INFJ, you're going to show more academic interests. You're going to go deeper into theories. You're going to spend a lot more time speculating and guessing on what could happen next. But beyond that, you're going to show a higher capacity to think of options and alternatives. You're going to see all the different paths that you could branch in different directions. And you know how to run experiments effectively and how to diagnose things effectively and how and why things aren't working and how they could work even better. How to increase the efficiency of things, how to do things faster, how to solve problems more effectively than you used to. And what might make something better than what it was yesterday, right? It's the genetics you were born with, but it's also the education you had, and it's also the parenting that you experienced, and it's also the experiences that you had, and it's also how old you are, and how long and how actively you spent working on yourself, and it's how conscious you become. Ultimately, it's a result of being conscious of things, 
whatever those things might be and whatever you're interested in and whatever your preferences and your personality is, it's being interested in these things. It's being and paying attention to these things and having a higher than average amount of attention for these things. Because the truth is, a lot of people live in a state of autopilot. A lot of people spend time on low attention and low conscious things. They spend a lot of time just draining away, just following with the group, just doing what everyone else says and just looking to a leader or somebody else to do things for them. And similarly, a lot of times people spend just time idling about, just watching the TV, just watching TikTok, scrolling through things that they're going to forget they watch tomorrow, right? And here, the goal of giftedness well, is the goal of consciousness. It's the goal of individuation. It's knowing what you want, knowing who you are, and living in tune with and trusting your own voice and paying attention to your own feelings, your needs, who you are, what you think, what you want, what you enjoy, and spending time on these things and actively prioritizing these things and living these things and constantly improving in these things, developing your skills and abilities beyond what is normal, beyond what's expected for your personal type, beyond what's expected of anyone. At least that's what I think. And if you enjoy these topics and want to support my channel, consider checking out patreon.com slash Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.